Okay, so we're recording. Hi everyone, so today we will be looking at um, Kangaroo 2. So if you notice, you should already have Kangaroo 2 as part of Rhino 7. It, uh, I believe it comes pre-installed now, you don't have to really um, do anything. So let's look at Kangaroo. So it's basically uh, a physics engine and it allows you to simulate physics uh, within Rhino. So that means um, there's a lot of simulations you can do in here. You can have uh, real life, uh, you know, form finding techniques, uh, inverted vaults, uh, those kind of things. Um, so let's look at the main components of Kangaroo. So we have, as you can see up here, there's, you know, there's all these goals, the angle, um, there's colliders, there's line goals, mesh goals, point goals, um, which is what we will actually get started with. Um, and then there's utilities here as well for, for mesh, uh, like there's a stripper, a roller, um, and then utilities here for dot display, for points, um, removing duplicate lines and those kind of things which actually come in really handy. So let's look at the main um, ingredients of this. So we have what we understand as these, uh, these solvers and it's under main. So this is what turns on uh, the physics engine. Okay, so the most basic solver is this one. Then we have uh, this next one. Let me just turn on. I hope this can. So we have your typical solver. We have your bouncy solver. Let's have a look at the soft and hard solver. Uh, we can also have a look at the step solver. And then we will also have a look at this uh, zombie solver. So let's just see what all of these do. So within solver, um, this is where you put in goals. So, you know, depending on what it is that you want to achieve, those goals go into the solver. You can have uh, a button um, for, for a reset. And yep, yeah, button for reset. Uh, there's a threshold value. Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory. It says stop when average movement is less than this. So uh, it's about the objects that are moving once you turn on uh, the physics engine. And we'll see what that means um, in a minute. So the tolerance is when points are closer than this distance, they will be combined into a single particle. Okay, and then on um, this is where you turn on the physics engine. So we will take the Boolean toggle and we'll plug this in here and then turning it on and off will uh, will make it work. Okay, so the di difference between solver and bouncy solver is that uh, the bouncy solver actually has damping and iterations. So the damping gives it uh, this bouncy effect um, and it actually slows down the velocity. So let's see, let's hover over this. So it says solver with momentum, okay. Regular solver is just, it just turns on the physics engine and then this bouncy solver actually has damping that will slow down uh, the velocity. So you can actually specify that in here. Um, and then it also has uh, this threshold which you can set uh, for when this thing can stop as well. So all of these things come in handy when you when you start tweaking. So bouncy solver is, uh, and solver is where you will be mostly spending your time. Soft and hard solver is basically, uh, the difference between the previous ones and this one is that um, it's got hard goals and soft goals. So it will first achieve the hard goals and then it will go on to achieving soft goals. Um, the step solver is used for animations. Um, so it will give you results uh, by one frame each time this input is received. So I, I haven't used this one so much, but uh, that's usually that's when you would use it it's for most the animations. Um, and then zombie solver is uh, where it keeps uh, the results internal. So all the iterations are internal, uh, and it just shows you the final result at the end. So we don't use these three so much. Uh, we'll be looking mostly at solver and bouncy solver. Um, so let's look at how this is sequenced. So the first thing that you need for kangaroo is 
is uh, you need an input geometry. So this is number one, uh, is you need a clean, good input geometry. The second thing you need is you need behaviors and goals. Uh, let's just keep this simple. We'll, we'll stay with the uh, goals. So you need to specify what goals you want to achieve. The third thing you need is a solver. Um, so that's basically running the engine. And then the last item that you do is once you get your results out of the solver, you can then um, do post editing to the resulting mesh slash geometry. So making it look beautiful, uh, getting it ready for fabrication, whatever it is that you, you want uh, to do to this. So if you consider this as uh, baking a cake, input geometry would be um, like your ingredients. Your goals would be your preparation and recipe. This solver would be turning on the, uh, the oven um, and uh, actually doing the baking. And then post-editing would be making your plate look beautiful or putting the icing on the cake. Okay, so let's start with the solver. Let's look at the basic um, ingredients of this. So we have this reset button that will reset the solver. We have an on and off button. Um, usually for goal objects, I would recommend using a merge component. Um, and then this is where you would plug in all your uh, objectives. So all your goals come into merge. Um, and all your input geometry comes before all your goals specified so we'll have a look at this and then this is your solver and then post editing is what you do after okay so let's just do a basic test um, let's start with populate 2d so we just have this uh, this little plane here um, and it's got a bunch of uh, points um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move this up. So we move it up uh, and then we'll specify that we're getting all the points out of this. So I'll store all the points in a, in a point component. Just move this over, actually move everything over. Um, and then after point, let's bring in uh, let's bring in a goal for point. So we'll bring in uh, like an objective or a goal for load. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify um, a basic load. So the input is points. So we have a bunch of points going in here, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, specify force so we want all of these points to fall down that's that's what where the objective is so um, for force we'll use a unit Z and then because I want this to fall down unit Z would be going uh, positive so I'll make it negative plug this in instead and then um, I'll actually give this uh, let's give this a value. Let's just go zero point. Uh, actually, let's make the slider one point zero zero zero. Point point zero zero zero. Okay, so that's where it's at right now. But if we reduce this, yeah, you know what? Let's just keep this here for now. So this is basically just specifying um, the force. Okay, and then waiting. Uh, for most purposes, you can leave this default uh, at uh, 1.0, so that's where we'll leave it. Let's plug this in, and then let's have a look at 
this side of the solver before we turn this on. Um, so I is iteration, so it shows you which iteration it's at. So basically this uh, physics engine or the solver, it, it iterates at every step of the, the solution of the, the physics uh, problem or the objective that we're trying to reach. So it shows you which iteration it's at. Um, and then V as a list. So as you can see, it's giving me a whole bunch of points. Um, and we can visualize this. So for now, it's actually showing me um, all of the points and their locations. Okay, so I will leave this here for now. And then let's have a look at what this is. So O goal function output tree. So this is basically uh, showing, uh, uh, this is where the geometry uh, comes out. So actually when you get into form finding and, and those kind of things, this is where uh, you will be getting what you need. Um, but let's have a look at this. Um, I am going to reset and then I'll just for the sake of this, I'm actually going to turn all of this off, preview off. So all we see is these points and then let's turn it on. See how they disappear, right? You can see how it's still iterating. It's still going. It doesn't want to stop, right? Because we haven't really specified a floor and these points are just falling and you can see the Z value changing here quite rapidly. It's just falling into infinite space. Um, so let's reset it. So I turned off the toggle to false and then I reset it. Um, so I'm actually going to bring something in here. So another objective, let's have a look. Uh, I'm gonna bring in a floor. So a floor, uh, it basically just sets up like a floor for these points to fall on. It's, um, let's see what it's going to do. So let's turn it on. Yeah. So see how they just kind of fall down um, in place uh, on the floor and they, they don't go anywhere beyond that. So it stopped at 60 iterations, so that's all it needed. Um, and then let's have a look at maybe, let's reset it. And then we'll bring down the factor all the way to 0 0.001. Okay, let's have a look at this. So I'll turn this back on. Yeah, so it's it's still, it's now at iteration 210 because now it needs to go through more iterations because the force is less. So that just kind of gives you an idea of uh, how this thing is working. Um, so what we're going to do here is we will actually have a look at um, how we can visualize this a little bit better. So let's turn this off. Okay, and um, I'm going to bring in a component called Sphere Collide. Okay, and then let's see where this is located. So it's under Kangaroo in uh, Gold Sphere Collider. Sphere Collide. So as you can see, it's asking for a bunch of points at the centers of spheres to collide. Okay, and then it wants the radius of the spheres, and then it wants the strength. So I will put my points in here. Um, let's specify a radius, but before I do that, I am actually going to uh, grab all my points that are coming out of this, and um, I'm going to apply a mesh sphere to all of them. Okay, so it's all the points, and then let's just go radius by default is one. Uh, so I will go, uh, same thing, I will go with 1.00, because that's how I want to build up my slider. And let's plug this in, the sphere collide, and then I will also bring this sphere collide radius to the mesh sphere, which is how we are actually um, looking at our mesh spheres. Yeah, so let's say I will give it a radius of 0 0.5. Okay, so you can see how there's there's going to be some collisions with this. Okay, I will leave the strength um, at 1 for now. And then let's just have a look and see what happens now. Uh, and before I do that, actually, I need to put this sphere collide also as a goal into this merge function that I have here because it needs to be part of the goals that are going into the solver. So it's it's going to solve for this as well. It's also got the floor. Um, so let's see. 
that's kind of cool. Yeah. So you can see how it uh, how it just forms. Um, and let's try this one more time. Let's increase the radius a bit. Let's have a look now. Yeah, so you can see how it starts to uh, scatter um, just a bit based on some of these, uh, based on how it's falling. And then if I increase this even more, let's see what happens now. So each time it falls, well, for each, uh, remember, there's no such thing as random, so every time with the same radius and all the other same settings it's always going to be the same result that you get but this is how it basically functions um let's give so right now the floor strength is about one i'm going to give this strength of 100 because i just want my floor to be really strong let's see what this does false reset it and then true so see how the, my floor is just is just a lot more uh, bare, and um, because my floor strength is so high, now the balls are actually uh, traveling across. And you can see here how the coordinates are changing; it's still going. Okay, but let's maybe make this fifty. And these are settings. Every project you do, you, you kind of start with something, and then you have to tweak the settings uh, based on you know the the best you know about real world simulations uh, and you go with that so let's try it one more time reset true yeah you see it's scatter um, if we want to play with the strength on this we can actually play with that as well so let's go maybe uh, I want to go between zero dot 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 0 0.001 dot 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 uh, let's go maybe 20 let's just see how this works uh, now I'm at 0 0.001 um, so I will go false reset and then let's just see what happens yeah so you see how this the sphere collide strength is not that high so it's not like they're really, you know, going crazy, repelling from one another. But let's say I turn up the strength in real time. And then maybe press the button. And then, uh, yeah, so you can just see how it just wants to scatter really far away. Uh, we'll turn this off. Let's kind of visualize this as well. Um, how do we do that? Well, maybe what we can do is we can measure the distance um, between, let's just say, like an average point uh, and the sphere from there. So what I will do is I will take average from all of these points. I'll double click on the, the wire to create a relay. I'll go into average and then I'll measure distance between all of the points in the mean I'll create bounds um, and then I will go deconstruct domain in order to get my uh, start and end from these bounds so as you can see it's uh, 0 0.64 to 11.01 so my start is 0 0.6 per end is 11.01 and then let's bring in a gradient and then I'll just change it to let's go different color maybe this one here um, so I will take my distance into the parameter and then I will take uh, start into the lower limit and end into the upper limit Go custom preview, mesh sphere, turn this off, plug all of these in, and I'll go into view. Okay, 
and then you can see how the average um, of all of these points is like smack in the middle of this place here so let me also actually I'll increase the radius a little bit decrease the strength quite a bit just so we can see how they scatter and then got it reset and let's turn it on so you can see the colors changing as it uh, as it goes far away and then maybe turn it off we will decrease the strength even more quite a bit let's go 0 0.001 then you can see how it scatters not so hard. So that's kind of like the basics of uh, Kangaroo and, and how it works, um, <clears throat> at least for this part. And then what we can do is we can actually see, why don't maybe we add um, like a bone to this, All right? So what we will do is, Let's just go in here and we'll make a little we'll make a little bowl so we'll start. Just kind of center it. We could do this in Grasshopper and, and do it parametrically, but just to keep things simple, um, we'll do it here. Make a copy. the size a bit and I will make another copy let's go press alt and keep it in and then press shift like this and then let's just go loft yeah yeah everything's good I'll just do this and Actually, you know what? Why not just keep things simple? Let's just loft this. Okay, and then I'll make this a surface. Oh. Join. And then I'm going to actually give this um, a thickness. And we'll, we'll have a look at, actually, you know what? Let's just not give it a thickness right now. We'll have a look at um, uh, what happens when we use this uh, with a thickness or not. OK, so um, we will turn off floor, just because. And Let's start bringing in this component here. Um, so for this, what we will use is actually known as a solid point collide. Solid point collide, and then let's have a look at where this is located. Yeah, so it's under goals for collision with solid point collide. There's other goodies in here, but this is the one we will have a look at for now. Um, <clears throat> so for points, we'll bring it here, let's bring the solid in as a VREP. Let's see actually what we need is closed solid VREP and mesh. Okay, so VREP is good. Set to a VREP. And then interior. So it's asking if false points will be kept outside the solid. If true, they will be kept inside. But see how it's it needs a solid for this. But before we turn it into a solid, let's just see what happens. So we'll we'll keep it at uh, false. And then unidirectional. If true, the mesh is used only as input and is not itself affected by the collision. So we don't want the mesh to be affected by the collision. So we're not going to uh, mess with this. And then we have strength, so currently it's at uh, 1, and then we'll just give the slider because we want to have a look at what happens. So strength is 1, and then we'll go all the way to, let's say, 0.2. So 
Okay, and then we'll see what happens with this. So we will take this into uh, our objectives because now this is part of our our model here, simulation. And let's just see now what happens. See, it just kind of falls through. It's not really uh, it's not really stopping. So let's see what happens if we give this a thickness. So we're going to use the offset surface command. Uh, solid, yes. So make sure the solid is checked as yes. And then distance, maybe we'll go in. Too thick. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of cool. Okay, let's just see what happens now. So we'll change our B-Rib to be this solid and make sure this is a closed poly surface okay that's good okay and then let's turn this on see how it's still kind of falling through so let's see what it is that we need to affect in here yeah the strength so let's go to maybe we'll go to the default Okay, and then we'll reset. Let's start it again. Yeah. See how now it's contained in here. Nice and tidy. And then if I turn this down, it's it just kind of starts falling through the solid. So it's not really considering it uh, as a full solid in that sense. Let's turn this off. Reset. Let's make this maybe 100 even. Let's turn this on. Yeah, so it's now it's even more potent as a solid. So again, like I said, these settings are things that um, we'll be playing with as we move through um, as we move through these exercises for Kangaroo. Uh, but this is kind of like an introduction to you know what Kangaroo is all about. So the last thing I want to show you here is uh, the bouncy solver. So in this case, we have. Let's just start plugging things in. We'll take goal objects into goal objects, reset into reset. Uh, we have threshold, tolerance, uh, damping, which we haven't applied the value on, and then this. And then all of this can go in here. Put this in here. And we are going to delete this, bring this down. And then let's play with the damping. So damping is basically slowing this down. Okay, so right now by default, if we play this, I think, yeah, see how things are kind of falling a bit slow. So there's some there's some damping happening here. So let's have a look at playing with some of these values. So let's see. If we have, right now it says value between 0 and 1 for how much velocity is preserved between iterations. So we'll go 0 0.01. Okay, so let's take it all the way to 1. Let's just have a look at this. Okay, so it falls a certain way. Yeah, you can see how the balls kind of just want to, they just want to leave. Um, and then let's maybe take this to 0 0.99. See what happens now. Still falling a certain way, but you can see there's a difference now between how it was falling before and how it's falling now. Right? So let's have a look at maybe 0 0.5. Let's turn it on. Yeah, so you see how it's, it's going really slowly. It's going, but it's just really slow. And it's going, and it's going. Anyway, so we're going to reset this. Um, so it's really about controlling how fast something is going to go. It's like uh, uh, increasing the drag in a way. That's why it's it's called damping. It's like um, you're, you're slowing down, kind of like friction in a in a way. Let's take it back to 0 
kind of where it wants to be and by default uh, that's I think usually where it keeps it and then if we change it to one yeah so there's just a lot more happening here so we'll just stick to 0 0.99 so iterations let's have a look at this so this many internal iterations will be performed for each results output so right now it's at 10 so let's go maybe 0 to 1 to 100 let's just see what happens so let's go maybe it's at 10 so maybe you go 5 Let's just test it. See how it's just going a lot slower. It's just slow. And maybe if we take it up to 10 again. Now it's going at its default value. Maybe let's try 100. So it's just it's just you know sped up because now it's trying to show 100 iterations for um, perform for each results output. Okay, so that's the basics of uh, Kangaroo. So we've looked at solver, we've looked at bouncy solver. Um, there's a threshold here as well and tolerance, which um, I would suggest you guys should play with a little bit and see how the results are different for each. Um, and then in the next tutorial, we will look at curves um, as uh, objectives or objectives for, for curves. So thank you very much. Uh, please post your results in the outcomes tab. Thank you.